As everybody is coming in from the waiting room, we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining the Virtual Pipe Progress Luncheon today. We realize you could be doing many different things right now, so we really appreciate you being with us today. So we're going to go ahead and get started because your time is valuable. Next slide, please. We are coming from our office, the Columbia Pipe Partnership, where we have been hosting the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington. And if you hadn't had a chance to visit the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington, please check out their website, arlingtonblackheritage.org, where you can see their hours. Look behind me, we have Freedman's Village exhibit right here, and we have the lunch counter over here. So please come check them out. Uh, come be a supporter of the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington. Next slide, please. On behalf of myself and John Snyder, who is our board chair of the Columbia Pike Partnership, and our secretary, Nina Chala, and our board and our community advisory council, we want to welcome you to today's Pike Progress Luncheon. Now I'm going to turn it over to John to tell you a little bit more about the Columbia Pike Partnership. Hello, everyone. I'm John Snyder. I'm chair of the board of the Columbia Pike Partnership. Up until about six months ago, we were known as the Columbia Pike Revitalization Organization, or CPRO. Uh, we're the same organization with the same mission. Uh, we just changed our name because uh, the partnership is really what we're all about. Um, in our values, our values are the same values as the Pike itself. The Pike community is what I mean when I talk about the Pike, not the, the asphalt and curbs and, and that sort of thing. But the Pike community, Inclusive, connected, prosperous, those are the things that we are valuing. And our vision is as the Pike uh, community changes physically and we get new buildings and we get more people moving in, that we still keep those values and that we still, we're still an authentic and exciting and diverse place that is still uh, the most interesting and fun part of Arlington. Uh, obviously, I am biased. Uh, I've lived in the Columbia Pike uh, community for about 30 years, and I can't really imagine living anyplace else. Uh, our mission as an organization is really to promote the vision and the values, uh, to be that convening party that brings people together, like today, so that we can talk about the ways that we can make sure that our that the pike is evolving in the way that we want it to, that we keep the spirit of the pike and the values of the pike as we change. Uh, the picture that we uh, had selected for this slide is actually a great illustration, first because it's from our 35th uh, uh, anniversary last October. And these are the nomad dancers. Uh, they're, they were doing some traditional dances from Central Asia. That is something that you see all the time on the pike with uh, our tremendous ethnic diversity. Uh, the other thing that you don't see is this is on Penrose Square, which is a plaza that was built under the form-based code in a new development. And the way that we're building out the pike is intended to foster these values and our vision in that we are building out places as new buildings come online that bring the community together. And this is an example where the community is literally brought together for a celebration. Um, just steps away is a fountain, which uh, from late May through uh, Labor Day is one of the great gathering places for little kids on the pike to go run through the fountain. Um, this is also near some of our uh, favorite retail places. Uh, just steps away from where these women are dancing is uh, a, an awesome uh, sushi restaurant, and across the street is an awesome Irish pub. And so we have all these things happening together, and the idea of the way that we've designed the form-based code, and we're going to be talking more about it today, is to bring everyone together so that we can continue to foster and promote our community. So with that, I will uh, throw it over to Kim. Thank you so much, John. We are so excited that you're here today. We are so excited for the values that Columbia Pike has. And today we want to set the stage. Normally we're together in a room with a bunch of tables and a bunch of food, and soon we will be there again. 
But really today, our luncheon today serves as a celebration of our economic progress, as well as our diversity. You'll notice the picture here at the bottom, which Anthony will share more about later. This is what the plan is for the place. Some of it has already been developed, some is to come. This gives us a forum to share future plans and really gives us an opportunity to enhance, enhance our connections and today to really discuss our possibilities. And I know we're not in person, but let's do that via chat. Let's do that online. Let's keep it going so that when we are back in person very, very soon, those are the things that we can talk about. Next slide, please. We would not be here today if it wasn't for our sponsors. So first, thank you to our annual sponsor, Amazon. Our gold sponsor, BM Smith. Our silver sponsors, Walsh Colucci, Dean Kinney Corman, Walter L. Phillips, KGD Architecture, KCM, and VHC Health, formerly VHC. And our bronze sponsors, Donahoe, MSR, Sanina Properties, AHC, Pentagon MMA, Venable, EG Reinsch, and Insight Property Group. Thank you. Thank you so very much for your support. Partnerships matter. Today's program came together because of our partners, because of all of the folks that you're going to be hearing from. And I challenge you to take a stroll or a bike ride, Henry, or a hike down the pike and look for all the stickers. See what stickers you can find. Take a picture. And if you want a sticker, later we'll put a link in the chat so you can get your very own sticker. So here is today's lineup. We're going to start with presentations from three of our speakers and partners, and then we will go into panelist introductions and our panel discussion. A few reminders, if you are not speaking, actually we ask all of you to please stay on mute. Please use the chat function for comments and questions. This is where we're going to be tracking. There's a bunch of us tracking the, the questions and the comments, so if we don't get to all of them, we will make sure we get back to you. And the presentation and recordings will be made available a few days after today's event. So thank you so much. And now, before we begin, I do want to turn it back over to John for a bit of a form-based code primer. John? Sure. Um, I mentioned the form-based code just a few minutes ago. It's something that is uh, somewhat unique to the Pike because it's a, a process, it's an ordinance for redevelopment that uh, has been implemented on the pike. The first part was nearly 20 years ago. The second part, uh, nearly 10 years ago. And the idea is instead of looking at regulatory formulas like a floor area ratio, I know there are people on this call who know all about floor area ratio, but it doesn't tell you what the building's gonna look like. And so the idea of the form-based code is let's tell people how high you can go, the build two lines, we want you to come right up to the sidewalk, those things that are gonna be placed on the sidewalk. Uh, we don't wanna have curb cuts on the pike itself, all these different regulatory ideas, um, and they're not just ideas, they are requirements, are put in the code so that someone can look at that and if you pass, you uh, are approved. Uh, I was the Douglas Park Civic Association uh, president at the time that the first form-based code project came along. Uh, it was in our neighborhood and it complied. And as the neighborhood representative, I went to the county board and said, I have nothing to say because they comply. So it takes the drama out of it, which is uh, helpful. And it also uh, allows uh, more density than would otherwise be allowed. But there are two things that come with that. The first part is what I already mentioned, which is that we want spaces that bring the community together. That's either plazas uh, or maybe it's plazas like we have at Centro, at the Arlington Mill Community Center and at Penrose. And it's also that ground floor retail because that's the place that the community comes together where we bump into our neighbors um, again after two years off and keep the, the community well knit. So as we're doing this, we want to make sure uh, as we're building it out that the buildings that come are something that we wanna see and that is a, uh, an additional benefit to the community. What we're gonna be talking about as part of today is some steps that we've taken under uh, to amend parts of the form-based code to uh, 
make, to strengthen the retail so that we make sure that we not only have retail space, but that we actually have a thriving business inside it. Um, I also want to briefly mention that part of the form-based code is the neighborhood's form-based code, which is designed to preserve affordable housing by allowing more density on the site, provided that the affordable housing is being preserved. And literally hundreds of, of uh, affordable rent apartments have been saved as committed affordable through this process. And it's something that uh, we hope will continue uh, for decades to come. So with that, I will throw it back to, to Kim. Thank you so much, John. And it was definitely your leadership during those processes were key and we thank you. And now it's my honor and my pleasure to introduce you to Mita Mazumdar. As, as you've heard, one of our challenges is to showcase, celebrate and balance our development with our phenomenal diversity. Shushmita is an Arlington-based artist, writer, and educator. Shushmita is also the owner of Studio Pop, a community studio where community creativity and diversity is the focus. Shushmita received the Arlington Women of Vision Award and has been appointed to the Commission for Virginia Commission of the Arts. Let's please give a warm welcome to Shushmita. Thank you so much, Kim. It's wonderful being here and seeing all the work that you'll do on the bike. Okay, are we, um, you know, I want to um, talk about two of the projects which bring me to the current project I'm working on. In 2016, I worked on the Recipes for You, um, a project, uh, you know, supported by Arlington Arts in which I wanted to um, interview, meet the rest ethnic food uh, restaurants on the pike uh, and get their stories and get them uh, to share some recipes. And as a book artist, I designed events where people could look at the various uh, recipes and stories and then pick the ones they wanted and make it into a handmade book. You can see in the pictures, you could bind the books with chopsticks, a cinnamon stick or wooden spoon whatever catches your fancy. And that way you could take home a book about the pike, which had recipes you like or you've never tried. And uh, knowing the stories of the people who are running these businesses on the pike. So that was um, a great success because we launched at the Columbia Pike Blues Fest. But after that, we had a total of 400 books made at seven events across the city, including two DIY uh, locations. The next project that I worked on was in 2018 when I was invited to join the famous Columbia Pike documentary project team. Um, they've been documenting the pike for over 15 years now. And, you know, it's about a team of photographers and interviewers. I joined as an interviewer um, to cap who've been capturing the life of on the pike, you know, uh, of the people and the places. And so I was part of the transitions uh, project, which was funded by the Virginia Humanities Foundation, it's now called Virginia Humanities. And I interviewed uh, six people um, or maybe nine people, I don't remember now. But the, the project was archived at the Library of Virginia um, last year. And we had this fantastic exhibition at the Library of Virginia in Richmond, uh, where you see that photograph. And it was really neat to take these stories of the pike, these colors, these all kinds of images um, to Richmond and to see, you know, the people of Richmond, the staff of the library, because I did a community engagement project there, to see their responses to this amazing um, snippet, you know, from um, our, our part of our, link, our part of Virginia. So that was very interesting. Which brings me to the Recipes uh, for Recovery uh, project, which is a newer version of the recipe book, but, you know, evolved um, over the time. Um, and in this piece, uh, we're going to interview some new restaurant owners and get their stories. How was it? It's really incredible hearing them talk about how they opened during the pandemic and the challenges and their celebrations. Um, I'm also talking to some from the previous project so they can tell us, you know, a, a then and a now kind of a thing. So basically the book I hope will document the story from 2016 up till 2022, but also mix in 
you know, the buy a nurse lunch program, which was really a powerful uh, thing for the retail, uh, for the restaurant retailers. And then also some fun interactive stuff, which I love to do. So uh, we did, uh, you know, how do we start this? How do I know which restaurants to go to? So what I did is I collected the names uh, with the help of the CPP team of um, 16 restaurants. And I asked the public, which ones do you have stories to share? And so the next, um, in the next slide, we will see some things that people shared at two, uh, at the October um, event, the CPP event and at the farmer's market, I invited people to share their stories from restaurants that they like. And um, that gives me an in to go to the restaurants and to talk to them. And that way they can see the community uh, support that they have and you know they can share back. So this is the way I like to learn about my community. I've lived here for 23 years in Arlington. So, you know, it's really beautiful to see these stories of how uh, we help them and they help us and we are all in this together and how we come out of it now that we are all planning to reopen safely. Um, so I'm very excited about this project. There'll be some fun things to, for people to track where they've eaten and you know, take notes about it and share. So maybe a map or something, you know, so we are still working on those fun elements and I'm very excited to work on this project. So thank you everybody. Shishmita, thank you so much. And as Annie said in the chat, bravo. I mean, your work has been amazing. It truly makes us realize how unique the pike is. And we also, it also makes us realize that we really need to dig into our values because change is imminent. And we need to make sure that our values continue to rise to the top. And here to talk a little bit more about some of the recent changes is Anthony Fusarelli. Uh, Anthony is the planning director for Arlington County. He has served us and served Arlington for 15 years. He helped lead the long range planning for Crystal City and for Roslyn. So he has lots of experience. And he also is a resident on the Pike. So the Pike deeply matters to him as well. So without further ado, Anthony. Great. Thank you, Kim. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so happy to be here today to represent Arlington's Department of Community Planning, Housing and Development and to share recent planning division efforts um, focused at land use and zoning support for the Columbia Pike business community in particular, undertaken in partnership with colleagues at Arlington Economic Development, our many collaborators across Columbia Pike and consultant support. As one of six divisions uh, within CPHD, our planning office works collaboratively with a variety of partners to envision, plan, maintain, and ensure the safety of Arlington's built environment uh, while also providing a world-class place to live. And we hope we have been doing so uh, with, with all you as partners along Columbia Pike. As part of today's session, I'll focus on two specific planning elements, which are important components of a collection of county efforts supporting the business community along the Pike. Specifically, uh, I'll provide a brief summary of recent zoning ordinance amendments from late 2021 uh, to the ground floor uses as well as the commercial market study, which preceded and helped to inform that effort. Starting with the market study, in late 2019, Arlington Economic Development staff, along with their consultants HRNA, presented the county board with a commercial market study they completed for the Columbia Pike Corridor. The report was intended to provide an objective, data-driven understanding of current market conditions and future market opportunities and challenges facing the pike. While Columbia Pike to date has often been viewed as a single and continuous retail corridor, one of the market study's key findings suggested that future branding efforts should really be uh, focused and centered instead on key retail nodes uh, primarily oriented along major intersections along Columbia Pike, such as at Walter Reed, South Glebe, George Mason, and Four Mile Run. Additional recommendations of the market study were also framed under five key themes comprising the study's strategy toolkit. While several strategies were reflected in the final report, Increased use flexibility for ground floor commercial spaces was identified as an initial near-term implementation item to further address and prioritize. 
So county board guidance also offered during that 2019 work session also reinforced the Pike's unique retail nodes and emphasized small business support along the corridor. This analysis would largely focus on retail spaces being delivered through the form-based code development, but also address those legacy sites, which represent over 60% of the commercial market space along Columbia Pike. This map, which was referenced earlier um, and staff regularly updates, provides a sense of the broad geographic distribution of new development with most of the sites now either complete or under construction. In addition, staff also expects to begin reviewing uh, more development applications for new projects emerging along Columbia Pike later this year. The effort to amend zoning regulations associated with ground story uses involves significant outreach with the community, both along Columbia Pike and countywide stakeholders as seen here. Considering the diverse commercial market on the Pike, this work was designed to impact both the legacy sites, so within existing zoning districts, as well as new development being, de being delivered um, with recently completed projects, both within the commercial form-based code, as well as the neighborhood's form-based code too. As a result of this effort, several use categories were either introduced into the zoning ordinance or significantly amended to expand the list of acceptable, acceptable retail types within the corridor introducing more flexibility as appropriate, and also providing more streamlined approval paths for certain uses as well. And lastly, following last year's county board approval of this amendment, staff continues to work on and also look ahead to several related next steps. Since earlier this year, staff has been reviewing past uh, previously approved use permit projects to confirm where any changes to condition language are necessary um, as we've updated the meaning of retail and commercial uses in the ordinance. This, along with updated use tables in the zoning ordinance itself, will ensure that more uses can be reviewed administratively, providing uh, businesses with a simpler approval path while avoiding conflicts with past county board actions. Uh, we will continue to collaborate with the Columbia Pike Partnership and the Pike business community. We're helpful to raise awareness and understanding of the new flexibility uh, that was created late last year to really help existing and future tenants. And so that concludes uh, my brief summary uh, this afternoon of the work um, of planning AED and collaboration with others aimed at really helping to adjust uh, and modernize our land use and zoning tools uh, to further support the Pike business community. Um, and with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Kim. Thank you so much, Anthony, and thank you so much for the work that you're doing, your leadership, and your team. We, could, we would not be here if it wasn't for your team. It is so great to see all these pieces and processes and partners coming together. So thank you so much. Uh, next, we want to introduce our next partner and speaker, uh, Tara Palacios. Tara is the director of BizLaunch, which is in Arlington Economic Development. It's the Small Business and Entrepreneurial Assistance Network. Tara has seen a lot of changes in businesses launching and sustaining over the years, but granted she has probably seen some of the most changes in the past two years. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Tara. Tara, thanks for being here. Well, thank you so much, Kim, for having me. I am so honored to be part of the Pike Luncheon, the celebration of 35 years, and then moving into the amazing work that we've um, been honored to do. And so as part of the um, commercial pike uh, market study, there were strong recommendations of having small business support and being able to do things to really promote and help and assist the businesses that are located along the pike. And so about three years ago, we started some very in-depth work with our friends at CPP and reaching out to the small business community, doing different events from our launch and learn to uh, Pike Your Love <laughs> at uh, February during Valentine's month uh, to technical assistance and training. And one of the other things that we did, um, not just with the study, but just because it was the right thing to do. And I think it's been really, really helpful for us is we meet once a month with our team and our friends at CPP to talk about issues, challenges, 
opportunities, things that we see that are happening on the pike. And I believe what that has really done is helped us to support the community in innovative and new ways. And so a lot of the outreach and the work that we've been doing uh, the last three years has really had impact. So when we saw the pandemic coming down the pipeline, being able to go door to door and reach small businesses along the pike to tell them about the opportunities, the, revolt, the results have been a lot of participation in the outreach and the tools and the work uh, that we've been able to do. And it, it just, I'm so pleased by that and just the after effect. Um, one of the things I did wanna share with everyone else today is just, um, since things have been opening up and a lot of the stay at home orders have gone away and it feels as if things are moving back towards a sense of normalcy, we are seeing a tremendous uptick in businesses wanting to start. And we're going to start to believe, I believe, see the things that Anthony um, talked about with the ground floor retail space and other initiatives to kind of really help support businesses really come to fruition. And so I did want to share next a video that we did. Uh, you'll see a lot of um, friends that you know or businesses that you work with on the pike. And so the next slide is something that my team was really um, happy to be able to put together. Hey, Andrea, we don't have sound. Give us one second, everyone, a little technical challenge. We tested it before, but you know. It's working. <laughs> we, always like, we always like to have a challenge on the fly. We always like to have a challenge on the fly. Hi, I'm Tara Palacios, the director of the BizLaunch team. We're the ones to help you start and grow your small business. We're here to help you with a business plan, working on your website, as well as navigating the system to open up your business successfully in Arlington. We like to consider ourselves as the biz superheroes. Why you might ask? Well, let's ask those heroes themselves. Hey there, I'm Alex from BizLaunch, and my superpower is content creation. I'm the guy that you need to come to to help you build up that online presence. And it's a superpower I use to help Rena develop a full-fledged website for her small business right here in Arlington. I'm Lourdes Morales, and my superpower is the passion to empower people with the tools and knowledge they need. I'm here as a contact for Spanish-speaking entrepreneurs to help them through the process to achieve business success. Estoy feliz de poder apoyar a su pequeño negocio. Hi, my name's Prakriti and my superpower is design. I love using my superpower to showcase small businesses on social media. And I also love using my superpower to help small businesses expand their audience by using super cool social media tools like templates, images, and videos like TikTok, of course. Hey there, my name is Yakin. And to me, the biggest superpower, it's networking and human connection. I love to be able to use that superpower to connect with local businesses and connect them with each other. After all, it's those connections that help us to build a stronger business community. And I'm Tara, your fearless leader for these amazing business superheroes. We're all here to help make sure that you become the real hero in your small business world. Because that's why BizLaunch is here, giving you the superpowers you need to succeed right here in Arlington. And so I guess you may have recognized a few of uh, our ah, favorite what? haunts. Oh, goodness, I'm coming back again. Coming back. <laughs> a few of your favorite haunts around the pike. And we were able to do a lot of that outreach and work with our relaunch program, where we work with businesses to help them not only with uh, consultations, but like a deeper dive consultation. Uh, we're working with consultants to help people navigate this change, this kind of new world order that we have in, in the business community and that 
a lot of customers and clients have now acclimated where they're buying and purchasing things online. And so the relaunch program was developed to be able to help our businesses compete in this new world and also to create new websites and e-commerce tools for them. So this is an example you can see on this slide of some of the businesses that we worked with and that was they were able to take advantage of these programs. And so as part of this um, and relocation efforts, strategy, access to capital, we're really proud of the work that we've been doing with different tools um, that we're able to offer our small businesses. So if anyone is interested that's at the luncheon today, please do reach out. I'll put my email and contact information um, in the uh, chat so that you have it because we really want people to know that we are here to help and we are here to make sure that you achieve the success that you need along Columbia Pike. So thank you so much, Tara. I mean, as Tara mentioned, there are so many possibilities on the Pike as well as Anthony. Now that we're bringing all of these components together, it's, it's exciting times. It really is, Tara. Thank you so much to you and your team. Thank you guys are superheroes. I want to get you guys capes next, though. But then I think about incredible. No capes. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that one. But thank you for everything. Thank you thank for your support. Thank you for supporting our businesses. And before we dive into our panel, I would not be doing my job if I didn't recognize our elected officials who have joined us today. Tell me if I missed anyone. Uh, thank you so much, State Senator Adam Evans, for being here, as well as County Board Member Matthew Ferranti. Thank you for joining us today. And next slide, please. So before we introduce our moderator and our panelists, these were some of the topics that we gave our panelists today to tell us about their business, to tell us about their successes and challenges, and tell us about your interest in zoning changes that are being piloted on the site. I'm sure you will have other questions because these are some exciting businesses, but I don't want to steal Nina's thunder. So next up, it is my pleasure to introduce Nina Chala. Nina is the secretary of our board of directors. Her and her family own properties in Chicago, the DMV area, and one particular pop property at the west end of the pike. Nina has an MS from Columbia, an MA from Harvard, and a BS from Georgetown. And one of her thesis topics was on the Columbia Pike form-based code. So we are so fortunate to have Nina here, not just as a property owner, but also as a board member and someone who cares deeply about the pike and the changes and the possibilities. Nina. Thanks, Kim, for that. Um, so we are excited to present today's panelists because each one of them is successfully running a business that is now allowed on the pike. We have asked them here today to talk about how they develop their business and what potential they see in bringing their business to the pike and or a similar business to the pike. Um, I'm going to begin by introducing each panelist one at a time and then asking them first to give a two minute introduction to their business and their vision. As Kim mentioned during this time, just please feel free to submit any questions that arise in the chat and we can discuss them after. So um, Mike Katravanos. Mike and his father are the owners of New District Brewing. Mike is an electrical engineer who applied his skills and took his love of beer to the next level by building a brewing system in his backyard. He then partnered up with his friend and brewmaster, and in 2013, the group started actively pursuing the prospect of a full-fledged brewery. By mid-2014, a site had been secured and construction began. Today, New District Brewing Company is the first distribution brewery in Arlington County since 1916. Mike, would you like to start? Yeah, thank you uh, for that fabulous introduction. Uh, I, I would, there's so many people on this call um, who I haven't seen in a long time, you know, largely with COVID and everything else. So I, I just wanted to say hi. Sorry if I don't have time to recognize everybody individually, but one thing I would say is that folks like Tara and um, you know Kim and the work that the partnership is doing is really, really important. Um, our business used a lot of that when we were starting. So um, we're very thankful to have come up in an environment that um, 
you know, is nurturing uh, in such a way. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. Um, so next is Lauren Harris. Lauren is the owner and director of Little Ambassadors Academy, known as LLAA. Lauren is a native Northern Virginian and grew up primarily in Fairfax, Virginia. Lauren has worked with children for over 12 years in multiple capacities. She has served as the director, lead teacher, teacher assistant, and program specialist for programs with age groups ranging from toddlers to the fifth grade. Lauren holds a master's in education, a bachelor's degree in finance, and an associate's degree in early childhood education. Prior to opening Little Ambassadors Academy, she worked for an investment management firm in Arlington. During her time away from early childhood education, she says, I realized it was time to go back to my passion. With a vision and a dream, Lauren opened Little Ambassadors Academy in November of 2011. This has truly been an amazing journey, and I continue to enjoy putting children, education, and families first here in Arlington at Little Ambassadors Academy. Lauren. Hi, thank you, Nina, for that. And hi, everyone. It's so nice to virtually meet you. Uh, again, my name is Lauren Harris. I'm the owner of Little Ambassadors Academy. Um, we currently have three locations on Langston Boulevard uh, now um, on the other side of town, but are so excited about the potential possibilities of coming to Columbia Pike um, at some point as we continue to expand. Um, one of the things uh, we serve children, sorry, we serve children ages two through five or two through six now. Uh, we serve kindergartners now this year because of COVID. Uh, so we did not before that, but now we do. Um, in another meeting, I will just also like to say that I am the human daycare specialist on the call. There is another daycare specialist that you'll hear from in a little bit. Um, so again, we serve children ages two through six in our program. Um, and um, we really value uh, the parent uh, family school partnership is one of the biggest things that um, makes our preschool um, just a place of fostering and learning and love. And I think also just a place where kids wanna come. Uh, and so we um, feel very passionate about what we do. Our educators feel very passionate about working with uh, with the children that we serve in our community. Uh, currently we serve 300 children, uh, 300 little Arlingtonians, uh, primarily there's a couple um, from other places, but primarily 300 little Arlingtonians. And it's our privilege and it's, um, you know, our privilege to watch your kids grow um, until they leave us to go off uh, to primary school. I will just quickly talk about some of the successes and challenges and I'll specifically talk about COVID. Um, in particular, because that's always, uh, you know, for any business owner, I feel like there's a couple different hats. I have a business owner hat, and then I have an early childhood education hat, which uh, are very different at times. Um, but the, from a business standpoint, you know, uh, working in a service-based industry um, uh, where you're serving children, uh, during a pandemic, <laughs> it so, has been a little bit of a roller coaster, um, but I'm so glad that we are now um, in, a, in much better places than we were in two years ago. Um, I would say the hardest part was the um, uncertainty around it all for us. Also, um, it took a long time and we did a lot of advocating, but um, we're finally able to perform tests to stay for our little people. So, um, you know, if there is a COVID case, you know, yeah. it used to be two years ago that, you know, the kids would have to be out of school for 14 days, which is a hardship on families. It's a hardship on the kids when they return to us and they're, you know, off schedule or, you know, you know, having a little bit of issues with separation anxiety. And so we're just happy that some of those things have been mitigated most recently. Um, and so I think, but that has been one of the largest, uh, one of the largest um, challenges we've had. Um, but I think that we, you know, one of the successes that we've had is one of our, one thing that we pride ourselves on is having teachers that have um, all made a trajectory of teaching and education. You'll find as you hear right now, it's, you know, there's a mass exodus, <laughs> exodus <laughs> of teaching a little bit. And so uh, 
we are uh, working through that and also loving on our teachers hard to make sure that they realize how much um, value they bring to their children and to the families that we serve. Um, and I really feel like they feel the love here at LAA. And that's a lot of the time. So thank you guys so much. Great, thank you, Lauren. Um, next, we have Alan Brooks. Alan currently serves as the Chief Creative Officer of Building Momentum, developing the company's creative vision and strategic partnerships. He leads teams which specialize in marketing, programming, immersive experiences, and community engagement. Another way to put it is he's the Chief Friend Officer. Prior to joining Building Momentum, Alan worked at the Kennedy Center building their arts education online content through the center's Arts Edge program. Thousands of classrooms across the country have used the learning materials and content he created. Recently, Building Momentum has won a number of prestigious honors, including Best Veteran-Owned Small Business in 2019, Best in Business 2020 by the Alexandria Chamber, finalist in the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's Dream Big Awards, and Alan himself was chosen as one of Alexandria's 40 under 40 and now serves on the board. In the summer of 2020, Mr. Brooks co-founded the Alexandria Drive-In Movie Theater, which raised more than $200,000 for nonprofits throughout Alexandria and funded the production of 470 desks for students struggling with virtual instruction during the pandemic. He's also involved in a number of civic-focused organizations, including the Alexandria Chamber of Commerce, Board of Eisenhower Partnership, and many more. He and the Building Momentum team are currently working towards opening the Workforce Innovation Skills Hub in partnership with Fairfax County, Leadership, and Melwood. He is also currently the Acting Executive Director of the nonprofit Athena Rapid Response Innovation Lab. Alan? Hey. Uh I'm also now I'm now serving as a member of being above 40. So I got in just under the wire. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, hi, uh, I'm Alan Brooks. Um, so building momentum is uh, a creative problem solving agency in the easiest way to describe what we do and why we do it. Um, but at the end of the day, what we try to do is solve for impact in our community. Um, it makes us bad at business because we're not looking to optimize profit over everything else, but I think it makes us better people and that's important. Um, you know, like was mentioned, we founded the Alexandria Drive-In Movie Theater in the middle of the pandemic because our community needed something to do uh, in June of 2020. When we look at spaces like Columbia Pike, when we look at spaces like Fairfax County, when we look at spaces like DC, we we look at how can we be impactful. Now, the, the, the building that we inhabit is this place called The Garden, which is um, at, at, its, at first blush is probably going to be considered a makerspace to most people on the call. Um, I, I think it's much more than just a makerspace because what it, what it becomes is a place for a community to gather and learn and become problem solvers on their own. Um, you know, the ability for us to, to bring things like that to um, Columbia Pike, to uh, Fairfax, to DC is, I think, a way to provide um, resiliency and, and preparation and, and the potential for when needed recovery for um, organizations, community members, um, and other businesses who, who will need that support. Um, you know, I like to say that we don't have any competitors because it's way more fun to have friends. So, uh, that's how we like to see the work that we do in Alexander Arlington and DC and Fairfax. So reach out to me. Um, my email and my phone are available to everybody and, um, yeah, we'll do some cool stuff together. It'll be fun. And, and Susan Soroka, who I saw in the call has been trying to get us to come to Arlington for a million years. So we'll figure it out soon. So, <laughs> and I will drop my, my stuff in the chat. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have Jim Hanischlager. 
Jim is the owner of Dogtopia and Falls Church and is also an experienced local small business owner engaged in franchising across multiple industries. He has successfully started six businesses in Northern Virginia and one in Washington, D.C. across the fitness and pet services industry. He is currently focused on an area development agreement to bring five to ten new locations to Northern Virginia with Dogtopia, the largest and fastest growing brand in the dog daycare and boarding industry. Jim also owns a franchising consultancy called Franchise Pathfinders, which supports new entrepreneurs to find, acquire, and or open their own small business. Jim has lived in the DMV since 2005, most of that in Arlington, and knows the Pike very well, currently living off it just outside the county line. Jim received his bachelor's degree in advertising from the University of Texas at Austin and a master's in sports and recreation studies from George Mason University. Jim. Thank you, Nina. Um, <clears throat> I, I really appreciate that. And, and thank you, Kim, for, uh, for having me. I am, um, like Nina introduced, I, I'm a, a franchise owner um, and, and I am developing Dogtopias. We are a dog daycare and boarding facility. We also do spa and uh, grooming and we have uh, a training program for those dogs who do come to us who are not quote unquote daycare ready. So in, in many ways, much like Lauren, we are that daycare. We just happen to be for your fur babies instead of your human babies. And, you know, what's a lot of fun for me to participate on this call is, is actually somewhat related to our challenges for our business and, and really our use type. And, and I'll talk through that, but those are really on the front end for us, you know, as a, as a brand, as the, the largest and fastest growing um, dog daycare and boarding uh, brand in, well, internationally, we're in the U.S. and Canada, we've really solved for a lot of our operating issues, whether it be state-of-the-art HVAC with UV sterile air, um, you know, negative airflow pressure in rooms, keeping air where it should be and evacuating it more than once an hour, to all sorts of different things with the state-of-the-art location. We've solved for that operationally, so our challenges often come at the front end, like I said, and that's developing the right location. And that's what's exciting to be a part of this panel for me is when we look at it, we say, well, it's zoning and, and it's partnership driven. And from a zoning perspective, we are often in some areas, Arlington County up until now with the updates on the pike, we've been viewed as a kennel, which really doesn't apply to our state of the art facility, but we are lumped into that from a category and, and a zoning perspective. So it's really exciting to see in some ways we in Arlington and, and just outside Arlington for myself can can start the catch up process with neighboring counties and even the district um, for a use type like mine. And it's super exciting to think about the Pike, which really in many ways is one of the largest, most dense areas of Arlington County or really of Northern Virginia that's not served by a metro stop, right? And in, in incredible demographics and density. And so from a business standpoint, we're very interested in the pike, we want to be on the pike. We want to serve Arlington County. Um, our challenge up until now has been, we can only be in light industrial buildings. There's only a handful in the county and, and those are, you know, many of them are actually owned by the county for storage purposes and whatnot. So the fewer that are available come to the other challenge and it's that partnership. It's finding a landlord who believes in our use type and our state of the art facility, sees us as an amenity for their property, um, but also the community. And, you know, so our business, you know, who do we serve and who benefits from us? We serve any and all dog owners and dog owners to be. We often end up being as much a resource about dog care and health and who are my local really good veterinarians, hospitals, what have you. Where's the best retail dog store, the best food? And we serve as that hub while also providing our, our daycare service, which is the, the hero of our business. That is mostly what we do, the everyday drop off while we're living life and we're delivering that exercise and socialization to our dog, because we all know that dogs are like us. They need to exercise and they need to socialize to be the best version of themselves. And we actually serve two customers, which is unique. We serve the pet parent who owns the dog and is dropping the dog off for all the benefits, as well as you know, some of the, the, the time freedom that it gives us as well, but we also serve the dog and, and we are serving them and how we treat them, how we engage them physically and also cognitively with our games and activities, um, giving them rest periods as well and really managing that experience top to bottom. You know, so 
our, our successes is our, our false church location was able to find the needle in the haystack, one of those light industrial buildings that happens to be in sort of a quasi retail area. It's on the border of false church in Arlington County. And that's exciting. We're opening a, another location as we speak over in Fairfax city. And we had to go through a special use permit. And those are part in the pun, a little hairy to go through and uh, ha ha ha. Yes. Thank you, Kim. The, um, the, the, the interesting thing, though, is this form-based code is is kind of game-changing, and and frankly, you know, our use type can be in many places in Arlington County, and the Pike is super interesting for all the reasons I've I've said, and and I think the interesting thing here is it it really creates an environment for a diverse and and dynamic development along the Pike. You know, certainly our use type is one of hundreds, if not thousands. That, that can come in and benefit. And I think it really reduces a lot of the sort of, um, you know, small business barrier to entry, which is really, really exciting. Small business being part of that, that dynamism that can happen in this part of the county. So anyway, in summary, I, I'm, you know, we are, I'm super happy to be a part of this call and as much learn as anything. That's, that's my spiel. I will drop my information in the chat as well, but thank you, Kim. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, everybody listening and participating and, and we're excited about these updates and look forward to it. Thank you, Jim. That was very interesting to hear. Um, I wanted to, I know Mike Cachivanos has to sign off soon. We just wanted to loop back with him. Um, and Mike, we wanted to just ask you a little bit about your um, successes and challenges and your journey to potentially expand on the Pike and hear about that with your company. Sure, no, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I apologize for prior engagements. Uh, and, you know, one thing I would share um, to those who are trying to come on uh, as new business owners, Arlington is a very welcoming area to do that. And we fell into that category as well, where we were a, um, a very old use that the county had not seen in a long time. Um, and we were only allowed in a small area as well, down in South Four Mile. Um, with the amendments that have recently been proposed, and I've kind of run this up the zoning chain as well, we would be allowed on uh, Columbia Pike. And um, our family is like, you know, third generation, right, uh, Arlingtonians who've been here forever. My grandfather had a business here. Um, and from my perspective, I want to have a business um, and have the opportunity to pass that business along to my um my kids, uh, many of us that grew up in Arlington recognize mm -hmm. that um, many of the businesses that uh, from that era, um, they, they were um, not able to continue for various reasons. And so my main focus has been securing a property uh, where I can uh, operate my business in perpetuity, um, kind of similar to how my grandfather did as well. So we're looking to purchase a property um, at this point, and the partnership has been helping us uh, along that way. So by identifying property owners who, uh, you know, maybe looking to sell, uh, tossing me leads, et cetera, so forth. So that's been an amazing partnership, really. Um, and I've been nothing but grateful uh, to the partnership for, for getting us this opportunity. Um, before, as mentioned, there were only a handful of buildings that I would consider buying, right, as I continue my expansion and growth. Now I have a widened aperture, which is awesome because uh, I believe that Arlington as a well-rounded community needs all these uses, in my opinion, to uh, move forward. So I would say it, that, um, you know, uh, to John's point, you know, every 25th of, uh, of March, right, we have all the Greek dancers come in and there's a whole bunch of Greek dancing that goes on at the brewery, right? So it, the, these, these businesses can be more than just um, vehicles to employ and, you know, cost money generation um, for, uh, you know, their supported families. They can also be community assets. I view that um, as I would, um, you know, my, uh, my house here in Arlington as well. Like, I live there, of course, but, you know, I want to keep it up and have it be the best thing that looks, you know, in the Douglas Park neighborhood, right? So, from my perspective, uh, I'm nothing but grateful for this opportunity. I would like to thank all of you on the call who've made it possible because I know that was a tremendous amount of hard work. Um, the other uh, uh, kind of thing I'll say, 
uh, for businesses is to recognize the importance of like Kim and John's organizations, as well as the surrounding bids, they uh, and the chamber. Uh, they really, really support us and have been instrumental in a lot of these um, changes um, that are forthcoming. And what's cool, too, about them is a lot of times they can give you little tips and clues as to how to navigate um, when you're trying to kind of swim through those waters. So um, I didn't have anything else. I mean, I was happy to field any questions that may come. But uh, if not, I was going to give, it, give you all back your meeting. And thank you for having me. Thanks, Mike. We appreciate that. Um, I guess just a question for any of the speakers, whoever wants to dive in and answer it. Um, we are interested about your interest in the zoning changes that are being piloted on the pike. If you want to you know, speak to the strengths and or other considerations to successfully bring or expand your business on the pike. And besides zoning, also, what else would it take to expand and relocate? If... Jump in for yeah, Alan, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so the thing that has worked out for us, if you're familiar with Alexandria, we're located on Eisenhower Avenue, right next to the Van Dorn Metro, uh, across from the Covanta um, trash incineration uh, plant, and 400 feet from the Van Dorn Metro. So uh, as I've said to folks in uh, Alexander City Hall, who are you going to bother down here if you do weird stuff with parking on the street? Me, and I'm fine with it, right? We're in, we have, the, we have the, the privilege of being in this really underutilized part of town, which parts of, the, of uh, Columbia Pike, as I understand it, have, are similar in that way. And so we can kind of jump in and try a bunch of stuff, and the city is willing to let us. And is and also beyond just being willing to let us is being is willing to engage in the ideation mm -hmm. process with us, and that's really important. Is having that great relationship with the county government, and to be able to say, "Hey, we want to open a uh, maker space that has a brewery on top of it with a dog park out back and a daycare inside the welding area," and the county says. Okay, let's figure out how to make that happen as opposed to, well, you know, our zoning doesn't really allow for it or, well, that's not really allowed. So having that relationship with the county is the most vital and, and important part of being able to grow and do and, and experience weird and new stuff, which is how you become transformational to a community. I will get off my soapbox now. Okay, I'll hop on because I know Jim talked about this while he was giving his spiel. So um, I, I do agree, I think. Um, being in Arlington uh, versus other counties can sometimes be a little bit more restrictive um, <laughs> when we're trying to make it through zoning or uh, the process. And I think um, having these changes come to like it's just easier for us as business owners to be able to find space that we can adapt to. Um, I will say that um, for me, it's not necessarily uh, these changes as a, a preschool owner um, to come to the pike, but I think it's also the fact that we want to serve additional communities. Um, speaking of just preschool in general, you know, um, we're still, we still have a preschool shortage, uh, a child care shortage in Arlington. Um, and while um, there are schools being built, um, they're not necessarily being built on that side of the uh, uh, of the Arlington County lines. And so it would be great to be able to serve more, uh, serve additional families. Um, so all of Arlingtonians can have access to quality preschools and not just a subset of Arlington families being able to have access to quality preschools. Um, and so I think that that's really a big thing. Um, and so, yeah, I will, I'll stop there. Um, this is Jim. I'll, I'll jump in real quick because it is the form based code changes allow like the biggest hurdle for, for us and maybe everyone, all the panelists in that, hey, we, we know we can be here now it's to find the right partnership and, and everything and I think if I understand everyone's business somewhat, all of us are doing a fairly significant to significant build out, and they want to be in that space for a long time so then I think one thing as a business owner you would look at is okay, is the form-based code, is it temporary? 
Is it a, a short term, long term? Is it a forever? Is it expandable to other parts that we can serve within the county? And, and those are considerations that I've gone through as a thought process in my head, trying to be strategic in my approach to the expansion of, of my business. And those are, you know, I don't necessarily have any answers. I don't know all of that. And, and maybe there is some to answer from this call. Um, everyone, I think most everyone, if not everyone, and this is not unusual for me, is smarter than me on this call. That's pretty cool. But um, those are some things that I would think about is, you know, longevity um, and turning that into kind of the partnership lens that we look through is what are the things that the Columbia Pike Partnership, that Arlington County Zoning and Planning, and that all the stakeholders would really want to see as results and outcomes out of this form-based code uh, that people like us can help deliver on to make sure that this is, you know, a success and, and maybe expandable um, in, a, in a positive way. So I'll, I'll also get off my soapbox now. <laughs> I'm coming back on the soapbox. I have one or more additional thing. Um, I know Mike had to drop, but I think he said something that was really powerful too. Um, some of us also own the buildings in which our businesses are located. Um, and I think as a building owner um, as well, I think it's really important that um, we're purchasing sound investments on the pike that, we, that can have that uh, fluency of tenant. Uh, and so I think that's really important as well um, that, you know, when we buy a building or when people are looking to buy commercial space, it not only one specific type of tenant can go in this. And so, um, so those changes do help that um, just looking at it from an investor perspective and a real estate investor perspective as well. Um, so I think that that was something really important that Mike touched on that way. I just wanted to make sure that that's really clear um, as well. Thanks. Thanks, Lauren and Jim. That's incredibly um, helpful. Um, what about Alan? Um, can we hear a little bit more about your business? Uh, specifically, what is maker space and innovation space? Made up words by Silicon Valley to make people feel cool about being in a workshop. Right. <laughs> um, you know, maker spaces, innovation spaces, they're, they, truthfully, they're all just buzzwords. What matters is empowerment and giving people confidence and permission to solve problems on their own, right? And if you want to call the space where you can do that work a makerspace, great. If you want to call that an innovation lab, great. The, the point is that, um, you know, when we look around our workshops or our makerspaces, we see 3D printers and laser cutters and welders and drones and uh, GPS and robots and all sorts of cool stuff. But what you don't see is design thinking and empathy and human-centered design and having conversations, right? Well, you see having conversations, but the point being that they're all tools and you have to allow for all of them to coexist, right? You can't just say, I'm going to drop a, a maker space in a community and it's all going to be better and we're going to be cool. You know, it, it didn't work in Arlington, right? There was one in Crystal City called Tech Shop and it went out of business because it didn't create a community space where people from all at socioeconomic levels, both people who can afford to, you know, have a membership to a place like that and help maintain the tools and people who can't, um, it didn't allow for that to happen. It didn't allow for uh, um, uh, a broad mix of human beings to be around one another. You have to create a space like that. Um, and then your operators also have to be willing to uh, be very um, willing to experiment and be weird and try new stuff. Uh, the reason we opened a drive-in was because I had a good idea at dinner. My partner of the company said it was a terrible idea uh, and we tried it anyway. And, um, you know, when we opened the garden in Alexandria, a company came in and said, hey, this room is really nice. That's adjacent to our workshop. Could we have our holiday party here? And I said, for money? And they said, sure. And I said, great, of course you can. Um, because we tried a bunch of stuff. And so when you're in an, when you're in a, a, um, when you're in a, uh, an industry that is as esoteric as makerspace or innovation or whatever you want to call our industry, you have to be willing to try new stuff and see where that journey is going to take you and not be beholden to saying that this room is going to be our makerspace because that's what we decided it was going to be in the first place.
So it's interesting, just um, was it last week or was it this week? I can't even remember now. I was able to go see Area 2 Farms. Is anyone familiar with Area 2 Farms? They do microgreens, they are urban vertical agriculture, all the buzzwords. I don't know what the correct buzzwords are, but um, on that regard, we do want to ask kind of a tough question for you guys that we didn't prep you all for. Nina, do you want to ask that question? Love those. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so are there other business types or uses you have seen elsewhere that you would be curious to see potentially in Arlington and or on Columbia Pike? And also we challenge those who are you know, in the attendance in the audience to put those uses as well in the chat. Um, we did just hear from Shushmita. She was excited to see museums, art galleries, and other things added to the list. So places like I'm sitting right now, the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington would actually be allowed in a legacy space or a form-based code space on the pipe, which is exciting. I'm gonna piggy, this is Jim. I'm gonna piggyback a little bit off of, of Lauren. I, and this is because I have young children as well. I would love to see some more children services um, along the, I really think, and I don't know this, but it just feels that the Pike and Arlington County in general is, is having more and more people who are finding the ability to stay in Arlington County as they raise a family. I think maybe that's not something that happened as much uh, years ago, and, and there's always a little bit of leaving the county and, and staying in the county, but I just feel like I'm seeing more young uh, families and, and kids and, uh, you know, some of those recreational activities or after school activities or even movement, education, movement enrichment for those toddlers and those sorts of things, that would be, that'd be really cool. I actually, and this comes to mind because I have some friends who own similar types of businesses. They're obviously not on the pike. And uh, it just seems that that is, that there's some value there. And they're kind of ranging in all price points from luxury to, um, to, to more approachable, easy entry points. So uh, that would be one for me. Here, here. Great. Okay, great. Well, um, yes, I see some people are writing that an indoor play space, an affordable one, um, that would be great to have on the Pike as well. Um, and space for creativity and business innovation, so. Well, lovely. Does anyone want to add anything else or any other comments or questions for any of the speakers or anything else? No? We're actually two minutes ahead of schedule. That never happens. <laughs> well, this has been great. Thank you so much. And I think everyone has put their contact info in the chat. So anyone that wants to reach out to anyone, it's all there. And um, thank you so much for joining us. This has been wonderful. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so all. Much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you Take care. Thank you so much to our panel. Thank you, Mike, Lauren, Jim, and thank you, Nina, so much for moderating. Um, as you guys have seen, these, these are the possibilities. These are now the possibilities that we see on the pike, and these are the things that we want to become the reality. And I do want to turn it over to John Snyder because he was one of the sages in the beginning, before the form-based code, to think about possibilities. So John, and any comments, any wisdom? Um, yes, I, I think this is really exciting, this panel, because it's talking about lots of new, different things. And the thing that, for me, they all have in common is fun. Um, and we uh, having a fun place to live is uh, a very good thing. Um, I, I find that sometimes when we're talking about the Pike, it reminds me of the Talking Heads album, uh, more songs about buildings and food, because we're always talking about the form-based code and our restaurants. But there's a lot of other stuff going on, and there's even more things that can be going on. And it's all part of keeping a thriving, interesting, diverse community as we grow economically. Uh, we don't want to supplant people. We want to invite people. We want to uh, change it from a small party to an even bigger party. Um, one of our, uh, it was mentioned earlier, Lloyd Wolf, who is leading the Pike Documentary Project, who is our He's the, the photog lead photographer and philosopher for the Pike. Um, he has a really good saying about the Pike, which is 
this is what peace looks like. This is what people from all over the world living together and enjoying each other's company is all about. And it's something really special. And we're the caretaker, the caretakers of that. And um, this kind of activity with these built with these new businesses to go with our existing businesses is one of the best ways that we can continue to do that. So thank you to everyone who participated in this. And I'll turn it back to you, Kim, for uh, the announcements. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. So well said. So well said. So quick announcement. A wellness Festival is coming up May 7th from 2 to 6 p.m. at Centro. Gosh, we have over 26 vendors attending. This is about all things wellness. So fitness, health, massage, wellness for your bike, wellness for your pet. Please join us. More is on our website. We'll put more information on the chat. Next slide, please. We also are coming back in person, everybody. Blues Fest 25th anniversary, June 18th. We will also have what we are calling Blues Moments. I want to thank Shannon Bailey for the term. So there will also be events throughout the entire weekend, which will really bookend the Blues Fest. It's going to be great. More to come on the website. Press, press releases are coming out. Stay tuned. And movie nights. Uh, we loved our drive-in movie. Alan, I know you loved yours as well. But guess what? It's time to be back in person, sitting on a blanket near everybody. So we will restart our, our movies at Penrose Square in Arlington Mill, and they will be in July and August. And as promised, you too can have a Columbia Pipe Partner sticker. We only ask that you display it prominently. So please, uh, Andrea will drop a link in the chat if you would like one for your business. Please reach out or for your home. We want everyone to be a partner. And again, Thank you to you. Thank you, thank you to all of our speakers and our panelists. Thank you to those who joined us today. And thank you so much to our sponsors. They are the ones that help keep our staff going, which really support the Columbia Pipe Partnership. Thank you. And with that, we are three minutes ahead of schedule. We want to thank you for joining our virtual Pipe Progress Luncheon. We hope that we will see you in person at the Wellness Festival or the Blues Festival or the movies because we've missed you and we want to see you in person. So with that, please take care, be safe, and we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.